Hello viewers, uh, thank you very much uh, and welcome to Excellent with me, Kwame Osuda. So I know you've mixed me a lot uh, because doing this you've not seen my face, uh, but I'm glad to be on your TV screens right now. And uh, today we'll be discussing a very important issue and we'll be talking to a personality who has made a mark for himself, uh, starting off as a pooling agent and then becoming the chief executive officer of the National Youth Authority. I'm, I'm sure that is some great achievement, isn't it? Uh, we'll be speaking to Ras Bubarak and I'm sure you can't wait for the interview uh, to commence. Ras, uh, welcome to X-Life. Thank you very much, my brother. It's good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. Um, we'll be looking at you know your department, uh, which has to do with the development of the youth, and uh, uh, we'll be looking at the direction so far, where you, you picked it up from, and where you've got into, and where you intend to take the, uh, the authority to. But before we do that, let's just go for a quick commercial. When we come back, it's still X Life. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, before the break, uh, I told you that we're going to be talking to one such fine gentleman who is made a mark for himself when it comes to politics and uh, when it comes to achievements. And he is holding a very big position. He is the CEO of National Youth Authority, the person of Russ. Brack. Russ. <laughs> Sounds it. like Obama. <laughs> 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 well, um, to tell you the truth, mm. uh, Mubarak mm. and Obab and uh, Barak are actually mm. the same because uh, Mubarak is Arabic, okay. Barak is Swahili, mm. and Barak in Swahili means blessed, okay. and Mubarak in yeah, Arabic, Arabic means blessed. Okay. You know, so yeah. someone who is blessed mm. or highly blessed. And you are highly blessed. Now, I want to understand what actually informed your decision as it were to get into politics. I love public service. Okay. I love to serve mm. and I, I believe that as young people we equally have a stake in where we want to see our country you know and it is important for young people across the country to get themselves involved because all the decisions that are taken in parliament that are taken at the executive level affect us one way or the other. Now if our voices are not heard then clearly we are missing out you know so for me that is the motivation, mm -hmm. the, 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 the need to see something positive mm -hmm. happen for our country and especially for young people. I've been involved in um, um, youth work for quite a while and um, I, I sincerely believe that young people have done so well for this country. Mm -hmm. You can talk about independence. Mm -hmm. The people that put their lives on the line, that got shot, that got beaten, mm -hmm. were not, I mean there were some, you know, senior citizens right. but a lot of them were young people you know Nkrumah assumed office when he was in his prime mm -hmm. very young man you know you can talk about you know uh, sure. President Jay Okufor he became a deputy minister yeah. at the age of 32 yeah. or so you can talk about President Rollins Tutubi Kwache Kwame Nahoy Ato Ahoy Alaji Udiyaya that generation these were all people in their 30s and 20s and 40s you can talk about under President Mills who decided to follow the tradition of the NDC by empowering more young people. So you had the Anabisius, the Blackwa, the James Ajenim Boatins, and so on and so forth. And President Mahama has continued that direction, you know, of putting young people at the forefront of decision making because we make up the majority. Mm -hmm. And if we make up the majority and if the, the, the future rests on our shoulders, it's important that we become a part of the process mm -hmm of ensuring that Ghana gets transformed. How, how has it affected your posture in view of the fact that, you know, we live in a country where uh, young persons who have the vision of getting into a game like politics, you know, have been uh, bastardized for the way, and then, uh, you know, they criticize us and they, and they say that we do not have that requisite, uh, uh, if you want to put it, requirements to be able to get into that department because it's strictly for the agent and strictly for the people who are supposedly uh, are supposed to be uh, what, what was it called uh, uh, mature self-made self-made right? if you want to put it that way or uh, experienced uh, for what of a better way well i can't talk for others but mm. i can speak for myself i've got about 13 years experience as a broadcaster mm. you know uh, yeah. somebody has experience 10 or 13 years as a lawyer somebody mm. has 10 or 13 years experience as mm. as an architect it doesn't make me less qualified to be in parliament than that person and it doesn't make me more qualified to be in parliament than somebody who's had you know um 10 or 13 years experience in whatever field that that they have found themselves you see we work with a constitution 
the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana is quite clear on who can hold public office. And that is why the Constitution doesn't even talk about qualification. That is why the Constitution doesn't even talk about who can best speak English. Okay. As long as you are at a certain age, mm -hmm. as long as you are of sound mind, mm -hmm. as long as you've honored your tax obligations, mm -hmm. you are equally qualified to hold you know, the position of, say, Member of Parliament in this country. Mm -hmm. you know, so for those who are making the age argument, mm -hmm. I think it's, 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 I would say it's a fear of youth. Because young people are creative. Look at all the apps that we use today. Mm. Twitter, Facebook, mm. all of these things were made by young minds. Mm. Look at innovation and technology. You know, it's been driven by young people. Mm. And elsewhere in the world, look at Barack Obama. Go to the UK, look at the you know, House of Commons. You mm. see people who are as young as 28 mm. who are in the British House of Commons. Okay. You know, all so right. for me, let's give young people the opportunity, the opportunity. Mm. for me they are not just the future they are the today mm. and if young people are involved mm. it actually makes things better i mean if you go even into our traditional areas mm. you have stuff like a mm. in how they mm. have mm. sarkin samari and so on and so forth okay. so i mean it's not for nothing that even the the traditional authorities okay. have young people as part of the team okay that you know, uh, governs that, that govern, you know, our respective communities. Very well. Now, uh, you have been given the opportunity uh, and, a, and a very huge one, I, I must confess. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think that you're doing a very great job Thank right you. here as the CEO of NRI. Now, we're going to be getting into that, you know, your direction for uh, the authority. But before we do that, let me go for a quick commercial break. Uh, when we come up, we'll look at that. Now, if you were I'm sure you're enjoying yourself. Uh, I'm speaking to Rasmus Barak. I'm going for a quick commercial break. When I come back, we'll still be talking to Ras. <laughs> Welcome back from that commercial break. If you just tuned in, you're definitely watching X Live with me. I'm here with Sudan. So now we'll be speaking to Ras Mubarak about why he, you know, got involved in, in, in politics and all of that. And he's, I'm sure that he's dealt with that issue quite clearly. Uh, now moving forward, we want to understand uh, his position when it comes to uh, his direction for the National Youth Authority and all of that. Now, Ras, CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of National Youth Authority. Is some heavy job, isn't it? Well, um, it's, it's it's an opportunity to serve, mm. you know. And there are a lot of young people in our country. Uh, I see it as a you know as a great honor, and I'm so grateful to His Excellency the President for entrusting this um, huge responsibility to me. I mean. Um, Having a direction for the youth of our country is not easy. It requires a lot of work, you know, both soft and hard. And um, so far, I would say so good. I, I, you know, November would be exactly a year since my appointment by His Excellency the President. You know, and uh, we are focused much on capacity building, on empowering young people, but also on the soft side of development. Okay. You, you, you said and clearly that you've been in office for a year. What are some of the things that you've been able to achieve in the first year of service? There is a, we have a national youth policy. Okay. The policy was, the policy was launched in 2010 by His Excellency President Mahama, who was then Vice President. Okay. And then um, the policy didn't come with an implementation plan or an action plan. When I came into office, we made it a priority. Currently, as I speak to you, we have a national youth policy implementation plan because you can't have a policy without a direction on how you want to execute that policy. So we have an action plan. Um, we are currently working on a scheme of service for the NYA and um, the, the strategic plan for the NYA because as a, as, as, as a statutory agency, you need to have a strategic plan, you need to have your scheme of service, you know, and that would help you in moving forward. And then we're also rebranding the NYA. A lot of people conf confuse us with, with, with JIDA. Mm. <laughs> the NYA is like the, 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 the big brother of, of, of JIDA, so mm. to speak, because this is an institution that was created in 1974, yeah. an institution that has the legal mandate to facilitate youth development in the country. Yeah. 
the NRC. Under the you know NRC decree two uh, four one. You know, so we are there by law, but a lot of people confuse us with Jida. Some people don't even know where our office location is. <laughs> you know, so over the last twelve months, we've been embarking on a vigorous mm -hmm. public education exercise, mm -hmm. educating people on mm -hmm. what the National Youth Authority stands for, okay. what we are there for, um, our mandates, what we are seeking to do. So if you look at all our vehicles currently, they've all been branded. If you go on our website, it's very, very active. It is, it is interactive and so on and so forth. So I, I must admit that your direction is quite, is quite refreshing. Thank and you. indeed, we'll be looking at how you're able to generate funds to support the projects that you have, you've embarked on and the ones that you're yet to embark on. Now, let me link into Fusua, who's having lunch with one of our entrepreneurs. Uh, Fusua, I'm sorry I've delayed you, eh? <laughs> okay, take it away. Welcome to your favorite segment, on X Life Lunch with our entrepreneurs with me, Fuswa. And we're coming to you live from Tavern 2131. <laughs> She's looking good, and I guess I'm also looking good. Kind Kessie, Michi Bellino, right inside Sakaman. Coming to my lovely guest. How have you been? My back hurts already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you my back you hurts already. Way, right? uh, no, no, I'd rather sit there. Oh, I'm mostly there. I know. Yeah, so. But you're looking good. Really, thank you. I'm trying to do the natural yes. thing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it gets to a time you get too busy. Yeah, and then everything else gets too crowded, and then you just want to go back to when it was just you. I know. <laughs> I know. Why do you have your lunch? Um, lunch. Do you do you even have lunch? Um, sometimes. I, it, it's so bad. I, you know, I didn't know you were gonna ask me this. <laughs> I should have planned for it. Ah, <laughs> Opa. You know, but the thing is, I do have lunch sometimes. Lunch is good, same as breakfast. I do have lunch sometimes, and most times I don't because I'm rushing to get on radio. Um, so I, I don't miss my breakfast, mm -hmm. and uh, because uh, during lunch time I'll be on radio. Okay. But I know my boss is watching. And I'm gonna get into trouble because he's going to give me a query. Um, most of the times at lunch, Charlie, What's some fried yam on Tuesday <laughs> or radio, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I so, know. you know, I know, I know. But you just want, it, it's just like you you want something to munch on. Or, and I don't do the biscuits, I don't do the sugars and all of that. So, um, you know, some fried yam and um, just a little bit, okay. Um, most of the times, if I'm lucky and I get some lunch dates too, trust me, me pop 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 Monday to Monday, trust me. I, I, it's crazy. People don't know that, but I'm not that rice rice person or okay. grain grain or that <laughs> thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just laughed. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On my lovely lunch seat, I offer my guests the best food I don't think you've ever had in your life. Mm. Forget about mommy's food, forget about daddy's food. For me, coming from Tavern 21's Eddie One's Kitchen. Cool. So, okay. my assistant Tyron present to you your lunch. Tyron, it looks yummy, right? Yeah. It looks like it's the truth. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Tyron. It's it. We're gonna make a sabi bro. No grace. Oh, no free. It did run out of to move Kiki. You know what I said. Okay. So, thank oh. God for this food. And I'm grateful for the show. <laughs> Number of times when people eat and leave me, and this time I, I get to eat and leave them. Okay, so thank you. Mm -hmm. And viewers out there, let's see what happens with this one. Amen. No. <laughs> How does it taste? So mommy, mommy, and Okay, I'm So when I'm in the mommy, but it's about one like that. It's about one. Are we still shooting? Yes, we shoot. <laughs> okay, okay. So you were right. It tastes good, right? Mmm. It tastes good. It, it does you. taste good. It, it tastes you. good. And I. It's my your your problem. What? It's my your your problem. 
Eh, uh, Guzo. <laughs> well, sometimes you know there's some people coming over. So I'm I'm sure they're already with me. You know that mm -hmm. you know when you're actually expecting guests or some, you do everything possible. Sometimes you ruin it. Other times it guests. I know. Yeah. So very good. Yeah. Akoye. Akoye. Tavern twenty one. Thirty one. Good food. From their kitchen. Yeah, from the kitchen. Okay. Anyway, good back food. to business. Mm. Baby, apart from radio, TV, what else are you into? If I don't see you on TV, if I don't hear you on lovely voice on radio, what is baby doing? Your yeah, baby is doing too many things. Baby is doing other productions here, you know, here and there. Mainly, it was about um, traveling tour. You know, having to issue tickets and um, book hotels and rent cars for people that need it. You know, it was all about yeah, and it didn't stop there. Um, now you're finally doing other productions, you know, and hopefully next year there will be something coming up. I know Jerry knows about it. And um, I have a cleaning company as well that uh, we do a lot of cleaning, cleaning here, cleaning there. So I don't mind cleaning your kitchen after you, you, you're done. No problem. Uh, yeah, no. I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Entrepreneur. I'm yeah. not paying anything, right? You will, come on. Oh. I didn't really need to do that. I'm so sorry. Happy belated. How was it on Monday? On Monday, it was fantastic. Get well, I got your cake in the bro office. Ah. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! I actually got my cake way before I woke up on a Monday. I traveled. I came in on on, on Monday, my birthday. Mm -hmm. So I slept, woke up, and I had a cake, and then I had drinks and everything. And I can do all of that myself. So that I'm having a party tonight, so everybody else Yay. can come. Yeah, so we drink wait, together. Wait, 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 yeah, wait, but wait. trust me, I just want to say thank you to. Everybody that crossed my Monday, Keche, Stoneboy, Gas Miller, um, um, VIP Stranger, um, you know, everybody, thank you for the wishes. Yeah, and, yeah <laughs> you know, Kumi, everybody that sent a um, goodwill message or anything, it was great. And thank you to Kojo Mensa, my, my papa at work. He's, he's, he's a beautiful soul. We thank God. Yeah, Amen. so it was good. Thank you so much, Tavin2131, inside Osu, right? I just sent. XFM. Oh, baby. Yeah. You're signing out. Come on. Baby. Anyways, coming over to you. All right. Thank you very much. For, so I must admit, it's getting quite interesting. Uh, in the in the studio speaking to Rasmus Brack, uh, the revelations are too many. Uh, we, we want to find out more from you. How do you fund the various projects you've embarked on? Well, first of all, we receive funding from Government of Ghana. But aside that, we have development partners and uh, partners we'll be working on. We'll be working with four. Okay. Several years. I mean, the really? UN agencies, okay. UNFPA. Oh, that's why UN is it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, UNFPA, okay. UNAIDS, um, and so on and so forth. Okay. But also with um, uh, public and private institutions as well, uh, you know, in executing some of our, our, of our programs. But currently, we're looking at very innovative ways of raising more revenue and okay. then weaning ourselves at least from, um, if not totally from GOG. Because mm -hmm. Government of Ghana funding, you realize that there are a lot of departments and agencies that are competing for the same pot of funds. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be very innovative oh. in how we can run our mm -hmm. programs. If you look at Agbogulushi, for instance, the old Fadama land, right. it belongs to the National Youth Authority. Oh, wow. You know, it's been polluted, it's been there for several years. Currently, we are in the process of cleaning up the place and then building a youth city. Okay. A youth city which would have housing complex, which would have a sports complex, which would have market complex where people can rent offices and rent stalls, you know, to do business. In return, they'll pay the National Health Authority. We will generate a lot of revenue from that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better than the way it is now. You know, so this is um, one of the areas we are looking at raking in a lot of um, revenue from. And um, I believe that we would require the support of the general public. Mm -hmm. The way things are at the market is not the best. It's, pro it's posing health hazards to our community and to the people who work there and people who work in surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to evicting people from there. We need the support of the public. Okay. Because you see, once we start the construction, it will create jobs for our own children, our own brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. 
there will be artisans, masons, plumbers, electricians, watchmen and watchwomen, drivers, and so on and so forth. And even when we finish with the entire project, it will still be available to people who want to do their businesses. Mm. So if you were there in some shack, now you can rent an office space mm. in a very properly structured place and do your business mm. and still make your money and still earn a livelihood. Beautiful. You know, and um, it is important that we we get the, the support of the general public because one of the concerns is that but if you evict us we wouldn't have, and I have met people who are on the land on several locations we've started the process of engaging them and thankfully they are buying into it and we hope that when it comes to actually moving them and getting the project off the ground we will still have the, their support mm -hmm. because ultimately Mother Ghana would be there would be the beneficiary okay it's Ras Mubarak corrupt I'll let you be the judge. I'll let you be the judge. Why would you say that? No, because um, that would be like singing my own, my uh, own I, song. I, I, I mean, I'm sure that you had, you've had a conjecture around town. Uh, it, you know, I'm sure you, you were not in the country at the moment when uh, that, you know, that uh, reportage was made. And indeed, when you when you were there, you sent a rejoinder uh, to rebut the evidential presumption that is purported that you are a corrupt person and indeed and you wanted to misappropriate some funds within your agency. Is that true? I do not intend spending time on this because it's a complete waste of my time mm. to discuss mm. some somebody's but I allegations. respect the fact no, that you are answering it because Ghanaians will want to answering, I'm answering it because it's like a saw. Mm. If you nurse the saw, mm. it's painful. If you don't nurse it, mm. it will get you know, uh, you know, it will get worse. Yes. You know, somebody's made some wild allegations. Mm. Wow, without providing a single shred of evidence mm. about misappropriation. Mm. In the first place, there are state agencies that are responsible for dealing with this. Okay. If you work in a place and you find that a public officer has done something wrong, there are processes. You have to go through the processes. Unless the officer making these allegations is saying that he doesn't trust the time-tested mechanisms that we have put in place to check corruption. Mm. And in any case, what is he talking about <laughs> when he says misappropriation? Has he given any, any shred of evidence mm. to the fact that I have misappropriated any fund? Absolutely not. All he's been saying is noise. Mm. That this, that, that, that. But he hasn't given paper. Mm. That you wanted to be a signatory to, to the account and that uh, you are... I am a signatory mm. to the NYA's account. Mm. Now, with the public service regulations, there's supposed to be two pair of signatories. Right. Right. Two administrators mm. and two accountants. Okay. So that at any given time, if one person is not around, work wouldn't suffer. Okay. So you have two administrators, okay. myself and the deputy in charge of finance. Mm. So that even if I'm not in town, he can sign as an administrator. And then we also have two signatories from the account section so that if the director of finance is not a, a available another person from the accounts department can sign that is what it is we had an officer who was seconded to us from control and accountant general's department an officer who had misconducted himself who had received several queries and we felt that this person was not working to benefit the he wasn't he didn't fit into our vision of where we want to take this authority to, okay. especially when it comes to meeting deadlines. I mean, you're dealing with external partners. Some of them are giving you their money to execute your programs. When it comes to filing your reports, you expect that the financials would also be in time so that tomorrow when you go back to these donors, they can still give you the funding. It's fallen short. So what I simply did was to write back to Controller and Accountant General's Department the controller accountant general saying that the gentleman you seconded to us please take him back and give us another person did you lock his office no he didn't lock his office no so that allegation is also false he claims we had barricaded his office mm -hmm. first of all it's a public office and i'm the custodian you understand it's a public office the office is not a private office because when he closed from work he leaves his keys when I close from work, I leave my keys. When everybody close from work, they leave their keys. 
it's not a personal office. Because he had made a threat of going out to embarrass me, I felt it was important to safeguard. Why would he want to threaten you? This is somebody who clearly didn't fit in. Mm. And um, I have absolutely no regret mm. for taking the decisions that are taken in the interest of the National Youth Authority and in the what, interest of... What was of the decision so harsh? Mm. I mean, because no. that, that might have triggered, you know, his no. anger towards you. I mean, you have, you, you, you've been seconded and your performance is, is not up to expectation. Obviously, would have to go back. But what would you have expected, you know, him to, to, to do? I expect a director of finance to give me financial advice okay. based on financial laws of the country. Mm. And to meet deadlines. And to meet deadlines on financials. And to be disciplined. Okay. If one of my officers is traveling outside of the region, outside of Accra, it has to be authorized. I don't expect anybody to just, each time they want, they just go anywhere they want without notification. If something happens, I'll be held responsible. Okay. Because I'm responsible not just for property, but for the people who work at the NYA, at the district level, at the regional level, and at the national level. And I'm the one who answers. For for anything that that that, that okay. is positive and, and, and negative, right. you know. So I have a responsibility to ensure that work goes on. Okay. And let me use this opportunity mm -hmm. to assure the general public. And, and just wrap up for me that mm -hmm. I came into politics not because of what I can get from politics, but because of what I can give. Mm -hmm. And they should be assured that no funds have been misappropriated. No money has been chopped. <laughs> Chopping left, right, center. No money has been chopped. <laughs> and that I would be the last mm. to misappropriate public funds mm. or, as he puts it, to chop mm. public funds. Mm. Russ, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you time. very much indeed. <laughs> thank you. Right, anyways, I'm sure you've enjoyed yourself. Uh, we've spoken to Russ Mubarak, and I'm sure that now you do know uh, the direction of the National Youth Authority under the administration of. Uh, Mr. Ras Mubarak. Uh, this has been excellent. My name remains Kwame Ubu Sudan. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you same time next week. God bless you. God bless me. God bless Ghana. Ras, thank you. Thank I'll you. See you next week.